Esteemed Priya, dear friends of the Academia Engelberg, ladies and gentlemen, and last but not least, a very warm and special welcome to the growing numbers of students attending our uh, conferences, both from Switzerland and as well from abroad. I'm more than delighted to welcome you today, this morning, and again, the sun shines in Engelberg, uh, in this wonderful room in the monastery of, my, uh, of Engelberg. Today, and during the next three days, we have gathered for the 13th, the 13th Dialogue on Science of the Academia Engelberg Foundation. This year's theme is food security. The fact that 100, more than 180 people have gathered for our conferences, out of which more than 40 are young students, um, this is more than a strong signal. It is a signal that the purpose of the Academia Engelberg is right, it matters, and that the Academia Engelberg competes successfully in an environment of a growing number of national and international conferences. It is also a strong sickness that the Academia addresses topics which are relevant. And finally, it addresses that the Academia Engelberg Foundation is clearly fulfilling his mission and purpose, which is on one hand to encourage a dialogue on science, and on the other hand to particularly engage and involve the young generation or the leaders of tomorrow. Having said this, I think you will all agree with me that in this case, the figure 13, because we have our 13th conference, is in no way a bad signal. I think it is just the opposite. I can promise you, until coming Friday, you can expect state-of-the-art presentations and engage discussions regarding a topic which is very important for us and for the mankind. It is important on a personal level. It is important and relevant for our families and our lives. It is important when we discuss sustainable topics and the sustainability of our country, our region, or even the entire globe. And the topic is also important when we discuss the role of innovation and transparent governance in our world to overcome existing and upcoming constraints and hurdles. And finally, it is forum to discuss the question, what happens if we fail to address food security? Ladies and gentlemen, in the next few minutes, I would like to share with you some thoughts with you, thoughts about the conference, about the purpose of the conference, which went through, them, through my mind in the past couple of weeks. Food security, why did we select this topic? What lies behind? Why did it attract you and you made your way to Engelberg once again for most of you? There must be some reasons. Why does it matter, food security? How is food security defined? What does history teach us in terms of food security? What are the critical success factors to manage this in the future? And why are you, the young people in this room, are so crucial to address all these topics? Firstly, why does food security matter? As oftenly, the answer is quite simple, at least for my thinking, which is sometimes as well a little bit simple. Uh, the number of people living on our planet Earth will continue to increase at least till the end of this or the 21st century, or the next 85 years. And the growth numbers are still impressive. 
Today, we are 7.3 billion people on this planet. By 2030, it will be at least 9 billion or even more. And the population clock is ticking every second. Each year, 80 million people add to the current population, which is the size of either Germany or the size of Turkey or the size of Iran. Every day, the size of one Geneva is added to our planet. And every hour, every hour, the size of the community of Saanen in this canton. Every hour, 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year. This, this is the quantitative aspect. The qualitative aspect is as well significant. The majority of this growth in the 21st century will come from Africa. And there's another new dimension in terms of populations. What we will grow, and at the same time, we will age. By 2050, which is 35 years from now, 2 billion or more than 20% of the population will be older than 65. And their nutrition needs will definitely will be different than those of the younger or other generations. Again, this is a very unprecedented scenario where food security is part of the solution. Let me come to the second point, the de definition of food security. The de definition is basically that all people today, 7.2 billion, should have or must have access for econo from economic reasons and physical reasons to sufficiently meet their daily needs in terms of calories for a productive and healthy life. And this at all times. Therefore, having said this, food security is a complex matter about a very differentiated value change consisting on, of production of food, storage, processing, distribution, and finally, consumption. So, having said this about food security, what does history teach us for such a complex and very differentiated theme? And if you go back in history and read textbooks, there have been always in the history of mankind concerns that we are running out of food. And you know all these histories and examples. And the most well known is from the famous uh, English economist, Mr. Malthus, um, about 300 years ago. And he made a prognosis which at the end not happened. But I can give you even earlier evidence that even 2,000 years uh, ago, people had serious concerns that we will have problems with our, our food security. And I will give you a quote from the Greek philosopher Septimius Tertullianus. And please listen what he wrote in his memories about 2,000 years ago, at a stage when we we're about 250 million people living on the globe, 250. And that's what he thought at that time. And then he wrote, we have become a burden to our planet. Resources are becoming scarce. And soon nature will no longer be able to satisfy our needs when we were 250 million people. The time will ultimately come when pest, hunger, floods, and war will diminish the excessive numbers of our human species. So what is the conclusion from this quote? The challenges and concerns of food security are very old, very old ones. But mankind has always been capable and able to find solutions to overcome and manage the topic food security. It had happened 2,000 years ago, 
and as well the prognosis of Mr. Maltus have not happened. So from this I'm quite positive we are here to make another prognosis or another scenario not happen that we will run out of food. But we need critical success factors to achieve this. So what are the critical success factors to manage the challenge of food security in an environment of still growing and changing populations? And I firmly believe that part of the solution is understanding the full value change, uh, chain and as well to understand the role of our creativity and the way we manage innovations. Therefore, if we address this, I firmly believe food security can be further developed and it can be managed in future. That is what the 13th dialogue of, on science of the Academy is about. And this is what you can expect as well to learn till coming Friday. Now let, can, let me come to the final point, and I already touched it to some extent. What is the, the role of the young generation who has so surprisingly uh, in good numbers gathered here today? It is needless to say that today's young generation is the one who is going to determine how food security in the 21st century will actually evolve. This is the generation who has to be involved and will be involved and how this will be tackled. And therefore, we aim to give them a platform, a voice here. Once again, and on very special purpose, I cordially advise uh, the young students, and according to our figures, they are at least more than 40 out of these 180, and this is the highest number of young people we ever had in our conference. And once again, I really welcome you, and I really look forward to learn as well from you, and I'm really thrilled about this, and I think most of uh, all other people in, uh, from my generation are with the same uh, opinion. And I would like to summarize the importance of having the young people here in our room, with, again with a quote, but with a positive quote. The importance of giving the young generation a voice could not be summarized than a recent quote from Babatunde Ositim, who is the executive director of the United Nations Population Division. And he recently said, too often we imagine that we know what young people need, but what is really important is our ability to listen and experience, to learn about our children, our ability to allow them to have their space. And please use the academia as your space as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you all will agree. This has to be and will be the spirit of the science and the dialogue we would like and want to execute uh, in the academia, um, a, science on, uh, a dialogue on science topics and on public trust about this. And this will drive and be a surrounding pedestal for our 13th conference and future conference as well. Finally, I would now to explicitly thank our program, program commission under the leadership of Patricia Holm and Willy Guisem who are the chairwoman and chairman of this year's conference. I think you all have studied the program. They have created a great program. And I also take the opportunity already now to thank all speakers and all panelists who will contribute and will con uh, contribute to the success of the conference. 
Thank you very much. This was a little bit too early. <laughs> Some of you realized. According to our tradition, I would like now to thank as well Prior Guido Muf from the monastery to give his welcome words to us. And before he will come on stage, ladies and gentlemen, I all wish you great learning experience till coming Friday and many new insights on food security and how we will manage this in the 21st century. And having said this, I declare our conference as open now. Thank you. <laughs>
dass der einst alle Menschen Zugang zu genügend und gesunder Nahrung haben werden. Dazu leisten Sie, geschätzte Damen und Herren, mit Ihrer Forschung, Ihren Projekten und Ihrem Engagement einen wertvollen Beitrag. Und dafür danke ich Ihnen herzlich. Ich wünsche Ihnen einen guten Dialog, kreative Ideen und einen angenehmen Aufenthalt in Engelberg.